Curtin Wald Beasley match was was such that uh, yeah, that we this didn't actually game get... one wasn't even finished. Yeah. So Syndic of Tides and, and Fortress Cyclops. That is uh, that's a baddie. And there's a Leyline Phantom on the other side of the board. We have a block and a trade. Syndic Syndic of Tides is so so dangerous on turn yeah. two. Yeah, you want to get rid of that uh, Fortress Cyclops if you can. It's a 6-3 attacking, it's a 3-6 on defense. There is a big Din bad a Dinrova. Yeah. Dinrova Horror. It looks like Melissa held a land so that she could keep yeah. her sending. That Very is... Tight. Uh, Ooh. And there's a Sun Home Guild Mage. She taps like all three, and she's like, they will be an extort. <laughs> yeah. Oh, John's down to four? Yeah, this game is he, he's in trouble not going right to be now. very much longer. But what is it he saying? I see a totally lost, and I, I think does he uh, does he have another leyline phantom? I didn't I didn't get a good look, but well, I know I mean, isn't the, pretty sure he has totally lost. Isn't the guild mage just she can just grind this game now, right? He's down to three. Yeah. I mean, there, he's, he's not he's not not in good in a good. I think she should just probably do nothing, right? Like either like if, if she's got like a good grind with the syndic or yeah, just start generating an advantage with the uh, with the guild mage. Right. So I mean I don't so we have a Cloudfin Raptor which is just, you know, chump blocker. At this point. Because um, like, she doesn't have a lethal attack, right? Like you can just double block and then she'll lose her guys. Um, if he he can't double block here because she'll pump both of her no, no, creatures. No, no, no. She'll one block one of each. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You said double block. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she'll block. He'll block with both, killing yes. one. She keeps one, and then like there's no there's no advantage generated. She should just like wait a turn, make some guys right, and then how much mana does she have? She, she seven. Can, she can. Uh, does she have double? She has double red, double white, right? Yeah. So she could activate the. Uh, I mean, I don't know how how good it would be, but she could make a uh, make a soldier and uh, and pump it. It'd be a two one haste, but that would still only no, get her. I would think still only get him to one. That's not really worth it. She should just generate a little critical mass here. So John actually uses totally lost on his own Dinrova Horror, which is uh, oh, yeah, interesting play. Nice Puts play. it on top, draws it, replays it, and uh, makes gets, her recoil the yeah the Guild Mage. Excellent play. Yeah, gets rid of the Guild Mage, puts it in her hand, and then she has to discard. That was her last card, so or her only card. She discards it. She does get a uh, one activation. Makes a soldier, obviously before uh, before. Really, the Sun Home Guild Mage goes away. Yeah, I never really thought about using Totally Lost on myself, but when you're in this situation, you know, it, it works. Oh. oh! She's like, nice play. How, how do you like a Boros right? Reckoner? Like, he either just killed this immediately or he's dead, right? No, it doesn't matter what happens. She's attacked. Oh, did she drain him as well? We should put she him she did two. drain him. Uh, he should be at two. And then, like, he, she um, just attacks yeah. with the... Uh, with the Reckoner, right? And then... He can't do anything yeah, about it. I mean, the damage will splash some way or another. I don't know what card... Uh, he's got one card in hand, I think. Under his uh, left fist there. Uh, you gotta be a non-damage dealing so, creature removal spell. She has no cards in hand. So that Reckoner right off the top. needs cards in hand if you've got Reckoner and Syndic? Mm, cards in hand don't matter when you've, uh, when you've won the game. We got, and it's a land. Yes, that raptor did in, in fact evolve off of the replay of the Dinrova Horror. Um, attack. Yeah, attack with Reckoner. What can you do? So yes. block. Oh, um, block can he smite? One. Does he? Uh, he doesn't have white mana. Never mind. I'm like, wait a second. What can he? Well, then he'll nug for here? one, right? Yeah. It's actually unfortunate that he evolved. <laughs> he would have loved to just not take that one. I don't think it. Uh, it would have made a difference in the end. So, Melissa de Tora with game one over John Kugel. Yeah, Boros sticks. Or Borzov. Right. In, in this case, seem very, very powerful and aggressive. What, what's, uh, what's Melissa got that's super exciting in her deck? Boros Reckoner. <laughs> Son that's a, that's a good one. Age. She's got double Syndicate Ties. That guy's sweet. She's playing one of two Night Watches. She's got a Wojak Halberdiers. She's got... She's got um, Boros Key Rune. Yeah, arguably the worst key rune, but still playable. She's got a Sky Knight Legionnaire, a Sun Home Guild Mage, a uh, the Wojak Halberdiers. Gift of I, I really like Gift of Orzova. Yeah. It's a sweet one. She's got one thousand lashes in here. 
Oh, well, that, that must card. be her black splash, right? Yeah, it looks like she's splashing for 1,000 lashes um, and gift of wars over while she doesn't need the black. She doesn't need to use play with white mana. All right, but she can use the black. She's got two copies of Martial Glory, which is nice. I mean, I'd be, I'd, I'd be tempted to just, like, not, not play the 1,000 lashes. Just, like, run, like, the second night watch, maybe. Is that crazy? It's not um, a no, consistent I don't think it's splash, necessarily it? crazy, but I think 1,000 1, lashes... Oh. Like, does she have... She's got a Goblin Shrine in an Orz, uh, Orz of Guildgate. Yeah, it's so she's, probably it's, it's not. Cost, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's not that uh, high risk, but she's not splash. She's not playing Ladies Prophetic Prison. Three, I think that's unusual. Yeah. I mean, maybe she, it was. It may have been just, you know, the, the 24th card or something. You know, the 23rd, 24th card where you just didn't... How many lines did she play? Just didn't make the cut. Uh, she's got one Madcap Skills, a massive raid. Hellraiser Goblin. It's got mad skills. Yeah. Uh, one Bomber Core, which I haven't seen that get going yet, but I think you guys. Have I really like Bomber Core. Bomber Core, Bomberman. How about Bio Visionary? That card can win you the game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know if you guys it's saw. Mad. On. It's possible. <laughs> it is possible. If you guys saw Kibler's draft, uh, he was drafting uh, Gate Crash, obviously, uh, in his article, I think, on Friday, and uh, he drafted a Biovisionary, and he had Stolen Identity, and at one point he had Biovisionary, Biovisionary in play and a Stolen Identity in hand, and it was, he was like, man, if he could just get the six mana and play the, <laughs> you know, play the Stolen Identity, get in with, uh, encode it on the Biovisionary, uh, or anything, really. Uh, do some damage. You know, he could have just won the game with the stolen identity biovisionary combo. Uh, it, it was so far it's a mondo combo. Uh, it's, it's I think that it would have been awesome. If it I, I love biovisionary because it's just like this crazy scheme to sell, sell cards. Like it's so rare, right? Right, and it's like, I need to get more. And you need to have four. Like, I just think it's this insane aesthetic. <laughs> I don't know, somebody's gonna break it with like one biovisionary and like twelve clones or something. You think it's like you know? gonna be like Stoneforge Mystic like Somebody's gonna be like Green Sun Zenith. It's gonna be in Legacy, right? So Green Sun because they can't play Green Sun Zenith in modern. Zenith up biovisionary, uh, phantasmal image, phantasmal image something. And that sounds awful. <laughs> Okay, that's gonna happen in Commander with, you know, Phantasmal Image. Yeah, Biovisionary and Commander, how do you like that? It, you I don't only, like it. You can only run one. I don't and like then you have like all the clones. How about Domri Rad in Commander? Uh, you like there's that? Commander players that are, I, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one that thought of that, just off the top of my head. I mean, but you can't even play multiple yeah, copies of the clones. Well, that's the you thing. Want, like, you just you play you play Biovisionary, you play Phantasmal Image, you play Clone, you play Evil Twin, uh, Evil Twin you play Phyrexian Who's Metamorph. Your general? You, um, I don't know. Mumir Vig. <laughs> that's the, you can play. You have to play Green. You have Green Sun Zenith. You just search for the Biovisionary, and then you. Oh, I understand how it works. Then, you know, I still think it's, it's a still awful. Chris idea. <laughs> I like Burning Tree Emissary. How do you that's feel about that? That's a pretty card? good card. All right, John Cuvelier. Swamp, most of the Torah answers with the black, white dual net. I believe that's the Guildgate, is that correct? Yes, the Orjo Guildgate. Is that that's how you're supposed to pronounce it? Orjo. Orjo, 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 I think. So we have dueling extorters. Yes, Basilica's creature on John's side, and Melissa has a Syndic of Tithes. I think uh, I like the Syndic better, although the, this creature certainly has the, uh, the ability to get in for quite a bit with the. So, As an evasive creature, gutter skulk there, I think, for, uh, for John. Is this just a bear? It's just a bear, but it's a just rat. a bear. It's a skulk. So, I mean, he's now matching her with 2-2 two, two for 2 power. Mm -hmm. He did get the uh, the extort there, I believe. Bomber core and drain. Oh, I like the So each player's got a 1-2 two for 2 and a 2-2 two, two for 2 and one extorter. I like Melissa's better than John's. I do as well, yeah. It's not like she's dominating him, right? But I like I like hers better. She has Sky Knight Legionnaire, so she could uh, theoretically trigger Battalion next turn if she has the Legionnaire. But it's not that good because John doesn't have a one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, he he has a one now. And <laughs> Call of the Nightwing encoded on the Basilis, Basilica creature and. Uh, Things could get out of hand I mean, really this, this quick. could be Game Boy's That's pretty like, quick. Like, yeah. That card is insane. So he's already got She's two got the in hand, right? But there's no, there's not even a clean attack. 
Now, I didn't see the Legionnaire, I just know she had it. She did. Now I saw it. She does have a Legionnaire. This is, she could just play the Legionnaire to hold off sure, sure. the Basilica Screech. I, I think right. that's probably that's a better play than attacking. Uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> Why don't I just hurl my guys into these random tokens? Right on. Well, actually, let's say she attacks with all. Bomber Corps takes out, takes one, out of one of them. Yeah. Right. It's not. But she doesn't want to trade Syndic with the rat. Exactly. So she's just gone ahead and play the Legionnaire, extort, and I think she just doesn't attack here. Yeah, I think that that's, that's right. <laughs> she needs like a little bit more advantage next turn. Problem is if John is removed for the Legionnaire. He's going to get yeah. further and further ahead. He does. Lord of the Void. It's like the new Lord of the Pit. Uh, a 7 7. Let me discuss it on the thing. Okay, so he's going to rumble with the rat. There he is. Lord of the Void 7 7 for 7 flying. When he deals combat damage to a player, exile the top seven cards of that player's library, then put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. So uh, he's a few lands away. So John's rumbled in with the rat. No trade from Melissa, which is pretty predictable. Sure. And then John followed up with Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. Yes. Uh, and a drain. She's very powerful, obviously. So Melissa's now tapping out for Nav Squad Commando. Big big battalion guy. Yeah. Three five battalion. Uh, a gets wall in yeah, this case. it gets well in this case it's a wall, yeah. When it has battalion it gets plus one plus one and untaps. This is tough, like because Melissa's gonna rely on Sky Knight Legionnaire to hold off any future any future cipher, right? So is she gonna be able to attack anytime soon? She doesn't want to risk Syndic either, right? Right. Um, it's gonna be a standoff. In a standoff, John's got an active guild mage. So I mean, could he potentially mill her out? There's clinging in enemies uh, with the extort. So draining Melissa Players yet again. Yeah, this, he he passes the turn, no attacks. <laughs> so clinging in enemy is actually like pretty strong against a, a Boros yeah. like, kind of low curve deck, right? So it doesn't attack, but it's a 1 4 and it has evolve. So, it can, you know, it evolves one time, it actually starts outclassing. Most of the Boros. More, guys, most yeah. of the guys that Melissa's got in play already. Yeah. You could just eat a bomb before. Yeah, uh oh. So here's seven, uh, six mana. Oh. Oh, yes. Ripscale Predator. That's the guy who's got mad skills already. He's uh, six four, can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And he's just huge. Yeah, I mean, he is six four. Remember Crawl Worm? <laughs> we got like a seven six for six now. Yeah, there he is. Oh, I'm sorry, he's a 6'5". I'm sitting, thinking 6'4". I can't so even believe bigger. you. Ridiculous. Right. I'm Don't so even know how much off. toughness Ripscale Predator has. He looks pretty dangerous. What creature was just added to John's side? Uh, looks like the uh, the Ogre... Uh... Oh, no, it's not Ogre Swim Lord. It is... It's got a nice glare on it, so I'm having trouble. Oh, I'm looking at Melissa's deck. No wonder it's um, it not thinking it's Ogre Slumlord. It is Ogre Slumlord. Okay, I was right. I just uh, looked at the wrong deck. This guy's uh, pretty advantageous sometimes. Yeah, puts, uh, puts rats into play whenever another uh, non token creature dies, and rats have death touch. So. Yeah, He's a 3 3. I may or may not have lost my Boros Strike under one of the death plus drafts in the draft earlier this week. It's <laughs> <There laughs> like, oh, whatever. Just kill the thing and like, oh wait, I didn't give it first strike. This is the worst. <laughs> it was labeled death touch right there. Moto, Moto, Moto didn't trick me. <laughs> yeah. I just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so a Boros key room from Melissa and then a Wojek Halberdiers. Uh, she extorts on both. She uses the, uh, the key room immediately to get that extort. So, so Wojek Halberdiers, yeah, I, arguably constructed playable if you like that sort of thing. But I mean, a 3 2 for 2 is already good. Right? I, think that's, I mean, I, I think that's true. I, I I don't think in standard that guy is going to cut the mustard right this second, but. Sure. I, I mean, I just said arguably. I, <laughs> that's you make why a good I argument, said arguably. honestly. Like, I think he is pretty dangerous. I'd be scared of him. 
like he, he obviously needs the support of uh, off with his, one his Boros guildmates. <laughs> and then like you have like an active treason or a or a Skynet Legionnaire on turn three, like it's a bazillion damage, like eight yeah. damage on turn three. There are other hasters you could play. Sure. There's no reason you couldn't dragon. Yeah, I'm down. There you go. Let's go Wojak. So uh, John milling with Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. And oh, look what he got. Oh, he hit Melissa's Reckoner. She's like, that's a $30 pay <laughs> Don't mill it. Hopefully nobody spills Coke on it. What did you obtain your Reckoners at? I did. I don't have any. Reckoners. You don't have any reckoners. I didn't get reckoners. Oh, I got them immediately. Uh, I should have. I mean, like they were they were ten, and then I was like, I wasn't fast enough, so I got them at fifteen. Yeah. But they're like up to thirty. They're now, like right? thirty. They're now, like. Yeah. And so now I'm like not playing reckoner until they drop or but they're never. They're not gonna <laughs> drop. I think you should. Standard. They're, I don't think they're gonna drop. They're all standard. So death's approach takes out the uh, the sky knight legionnaire. So the most important thing that's happening is we're gonna have Cipher. Yeah, he's gonna be able on. to he's gonna be able to get in with the uh, the Basilicus creature, which has Call of the Nightwing encoded on it, and uh, so he's getting in with the creature and one horror, and of course another horror gonna come down. Yeah, the amount of damage being done, not really the proximate right. thing that's. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing because you know all it. All those creatures on Melissa's side, and he takes out one two-two flyer, and it's like kind of changes Completely changes the game. Defense is collapsed, right? Yeah. John can start attacking with multiple uh, multiple token creatures. Yeah, and then he's it's, going it's, to. I think he's uh, he's set up pretty well now. I mean. Melissa needs to deal with the, <laughs> this creature somehow because otherwise it's just going to keep making more guys. What has she got to, to deal with it actually? I mean, what, what does she have in terms of removal? Um, aerial maneuver? Yeah, it's like, like, like 1,000 like, lashes. It's like, 1, I mean, it's not. It'll keep it off of her. Sure. But I mean, it doesn't deal with the horrors that have already been created. Right. Well, at least then she can start like maybe taking them out with Bomber Core. But I, Massive I Raid. Yeah, Massive Raid can do it. Uh, so she's getting in here. She's attacking with she's the Wojek Halberdiers and the Ripscale Predator. Um, oh, but the Halberdiers is not is not first strike, no battalion here. So Ripscale Predator has to be blocked by two creatures. Looks like Skulk and Horror are getting in front of it. And the Anemones are getting in front of the Halberdiers. So it looks like Predator's going to take out the, uh, the Skulk and the Horror. But the, uh, the Howard ears and the and enemies are just bouncing off each other. Is this going to set up the Ogre Seal? Yes, it is. Uh, the, well, he's going to get one rat out of it. Because he's going to lose his Skulk and then get a rat. He's basically downgraded the rat. It's a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch, touch bro. Yeah, 1-1 with, with Death Touch instead of a 2-2. Two, two. So not necessarily downgraded. All right, so, oh. so Melissa's going to make sure he gets another rat, but she's a uh, combat trick. Yeah, Marshall Glory there. Um, and I believe she extorted as well. Yeah, Marshall Glory gets target creature gets plus three, plus zero, and other. And she's indicating that she was pumping her creatures rather than his. Yes, yes. I believe both of those pumps went to, uh, went the, uh, to the, the halberdiers. Yeah. Was that an enemy's? Did that have an evolve? Like it didn't, I don't believe I don't it had an evolved. I think she's just getting it big enough. And she just wanted to take out the anemone, so she traded the martial glory for the anemones, which is reasonable considering that how how strong that card is. Just yeah, just holding as up against wall, these yeah. little guys. So he does get the two rats there because two non-creature tokens or non-token creatures <laughs> died, and so uh, two rats, both with death touch. Actually, I, I think that really improved Melissa's position quite a bit. But I mean, the Death Touch rats are actually going to be really deterring any ground, any ground yeah. attack. And, and she has nothing else other than ground attack yeah, the at this point. Are, yeah, never mind. I, I guess yeah, it did I, help. I but, actually, like, there's just this inevitability coming from the Cypher card. Yeah. Oh, and he's draining he's with the Every the Cypher, yeah. yeah just, Every time that Cypher... Uh, Triggers, he casts Call of the Nightwing without paying the mana cost, pays one, gets extorted off of it. So, 
he definitely has um, some. Uh, what do you call this? That's grind, right? Uh, yeah, balustrade spiders that are grind or so. Reveal, basically mill them until they reveal a land. I don't think that was very many until she hit that mountain. That may have been the top card. I, uh, I didn't didn't catch it, but yep. she's scooping them up. So game three. John takes game two, and uh, this is a this is a pretty pretty cool matchup here. Two very different decks. John stacks like a little engine that game. Yeah, follow so, the Nightwing. I like it. What has she got that she can bring in to deal with? Uh... Who's who's a Nightwing villain? A Nightwing villain? <laughs> yeah. Who's a Nightwing villain? I mean, that's who she needs. I mean. Like, Two-Face is the quintessential Robin. Okay. So, so Dick Grayson? Yeah, yeah, Dick Grayson Robin. Yeah, yeah. So like, Melissa needs Two-Face then and two -face. To, to, to fight off against Call of the Nightwing? I'm trying to think, like, who does Nightwing not like? I right. Know, Trigon? <laughs> it's a... I don't know. This is a really good question. Here you go. He's, he's got... He had, he had a Batman theme deck there. Call of the Nightwing, Basilica Screecher. <laughs> he's got the bats, sure. He's got the bats, the horrors. He's, he's got rats in there. I don't you know. They don't really fit with that. I mean, flying rat kind of. Batman doesn't like rats, yeah. Where does he get these wonderful toys? So, well, this, uh, I mean, what do you think about bringing an, bringing an act of treason? I, is that possibly good enough? Right? I don't know, he doesn't have anything really that big to steal, but then again, saying, it may be just the battalion, guy, right? And then like, just get a mass, like a huge battalion to Do turn. something terrible to it, like, I don't know. She, has, she doesn't have like a sack outlet or anything. Like yeah, she, I'm thinking like, could she... High Priest of Penance, maybe? Just kind of get into a spot? No, yeah, it's I, not going to happen, right? It's I'm not, not sure... How about, in, what, what do you think about, she's already got black, what if she decides in Kingpin's Pentagon? She could do that, I can see that. I mean, I, mean, I don't love it, but... It's, he had so many 1-1 one -one flyers in that game. I mean, then again, this next game could just go completely different. Because he had so many 1-1 one -one flyers because of two cards. Well, mainly Call of the Nightwing, but he had it on Basilica Street. So he, just get he doesn't like draw the Call of the Nightwing, and it's a completely different... He's playing a completely different uh, different game. She could just get a fast beat down. But like those games are so different, you know. Like game one, it didn't even look like John had any permanents in play, and then in game two, it was just utterly commanding from from the beginning of the game. Right. I mean, as far as like looking at his threats, he does have a couple of copies of Cloudfin Raptor, and she did see at least one. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that could go for the uh, you know the, the Kingpin's pet plan. Just to get in the way. It's not great still, but it's like random black flyers. I Yeah, he's just got that one screecher, one call of the Nightwing. She's not gonna side in like Basilis Basilica Screecher. I think she's probably just gonna be like, I'm gonna play my A game. Yeah. <coughs> Hopefully I don't get screwed by by Cypher plus an amazing creature. Yeah. He's got a nice, like, sub, you know, mill sub theme kind of thing. Like, he is Demir, which is sort of, if you're Demir, you probably have the mill sub theme kind of thing going on. But he has. Disassembled her with two cards, that's the thing, right? Like, <coughs> sure, yeah. Kill in that Sky Knight Legionnaire, end your life. He's got he's got the balustrade spy which we saw. He's got uh, well he's got death's approach which can take advantage of the uh, the milled cards. All right, uh, so all right. So we're, we're started off. Is that a Wars of the game? Uh, that's a godless shrine. Either way. Yeah, same same difference in this case. I think she played a tap so, and uh, she got Jack. Daring Skyjack. Yep. You don't know Jack. I don't. Thrilled Oculus. It just sounds delicious. It sounds like calamari to me every time. I think I see frilled octopus. I think grilled octopus, calamari. Suddenly, I'm hungry. That guy's like a vanilla in, in John's deck, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. His uh, he has islands and swamps and a guild gate. He literally has no green. Van Billy. I'm looking. He doesn't have. Um, 
He has prophetic. No, he doesn't play prophetic prism. Never mind. So, so Melissa there you follows go. up with the War Mind Infantry. Grilled Oculus, you are delicious. So yeah. <laughs> Dusk Mental Seer. So this is the mill sub theme I was talking about. He's got the Dusk Mental Seer. He's got um, Undercity Informer in here. So so he, he can kind of take advantage of uh, of that. Melissa I mean, rumbling with her three one and two three. God forbid he ever connects with Lord of the Void. What do you think? John's probably gonna trade his his grilled octopus. Yes. <laughs> with uh, you, you trade it with Jack. Or? Yeah, I think I, I think I, I trade that spider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah then do that. It's like three against two. Oh no. She's gonna marshal glory at here. And yeah, she, so she's gonna pump the front of the war mind infantry and the back, uh, the of, back the... of the skyjack. So wow, nice little blow out there. I would have made the same play, and I just got to point out the exact same way. And I'm sure Melissa's thinking right now. I really wish that I'd grinded him with a with an extort too. <laughs> If only I had the Syndic of Tithes out earlier. What do we got here? Uh, clinging in enemies. Oh. So that's, uh, again, going to put a, a stop to things. I, don't, I still don't Not mind yet. that play from John at no. this point. Like, she can rumble with all three. Jack gets flying, right? It right. Can't, it can't block Jack. It'll block one of the two Xs. Sure. It'll it'll most likely block the Syndic, I, I think. Is John going to trade Syndic with... I, mean, I think most probably fine trading Syndic with Dust Mantle Seer, even if she doesn't have a trick. I mean, those are both powerful two drops. I mean, that's the extent of John's options here, isn't it? Yeah. Trade or no. I, I think he probably is valuing the... Uh, I think he probably the wants to keep it more than she's valuing Yeah, I keep calling Syndic. it Dust Mantle Seer. It's Dust yeah, Mantle Guild Mage. Mage. Sorry if I... Say it. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. I, you can see which card that I'm uh, excited to play. <laughs> Dusk Mantle Seer seems so cool. Uh, but yeah, Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. Sorry, guys. Um, I, I would think he'd want to keep that around, but, uh, you know, maybe he isn't is, uh, willing to trade it with the Syndic of Tithes. I guess the Syndic is technically better. Like, it's a good trade for him. I mean, you I don't think it's clear Marshall. that it's better, but I mean, he might get blown out by a combat trick. Exactly, that's the scary thing. I mean, she he's already seen one Marshal Glory, so, you know, what are the chances she has another? Uh, so he does block there, yeah. and uh, so he, do, he does the trade. He does make the trade. She used to play a replacement guy to keep Jack in the sky, uh, you know, keep, keeping it above that defender. Yeah, and so then, Nav Squad Command, excuse me, Commandos comes down, so that'll... And he's big enough also to survive, and he's going to untap, etc. Yep. So Melissa looks like she's she's got really good tempo this game. John, has he got all swamps and then one gate? Is that what it looks like? Uh, yeah, it looks that way. In fact, that looks like a cavern of souls, but it's not. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. So what do we got? Here? Oh, totally lost. Okay, so I thought John was in pretty deep trouble with that Commandos hitting play, uh, so having totally lost to make her recast it, pretty that, nice that guy's defensive totally measure. Lost. Yeah. Because he was going to be a 4-6, uh, and that was going to take out her and uh, John's and enemies if he chose to run, as was the war mine, or, yeah, war mine infantry. So now just the infantry by itself and a fight. So infantry actually takes out the anemones with In the help battle. of a pit fight. Yeah. So anemones blocks and then pit fight and now uh, now John's side of the board is clear. It's slowly one power, not enough for the No, it's not enough to fight. Pieces. Corpse blockade from John. He's got a lot of defenders in this deck. I think that's what he wants. He wants to go long. So on board, Corpse Blockade on John's side. Melissa has War Mind, Infantry, and Daring Skyjack, so no battalion happening without a haste creature this turn. But Melissa taps five, plays the Nav Squad Commandos, which we knew she had. Same same fellow yeah. prior to getting totally lost. He got totally lost, but she found him. He found his way out of the uh, out of the library. So I guess he wasn't totally lost. 
he, he, just was, like, he, was he took a wrong turn temporarily for one lost. Turn. Right. I think that'd be more apt kind of like a, a, a flavor fail, right? Yeah. Just like, like temporarily lost. I just think that's mild this. inconvenience. <laughs> is really, really exactly. what that card is. Wrong turn had to ask oh. for direction. So there's the combo. Basilica Screecher with Call of the Nightwing, and um, if Melissa does not have an answer for that Screecher, she may be facing a similar board as last game. I mean, this time John's down to eight. Oh, Let me look at this again. He's extorting at the same time? Yeah. It's like, can't Jack jump during defense instead? <laughs> Can he just stay flying? What if I block with three creatures? Because the battalion's trigger then. Can I get that? Maybe she's... So, what happens if Melissa rumbles, right? She rumbles. He's going to put the token in front of Jack, right? Which is bad. She's apparently got a question here. So Maybe she's, she's just got like, active treason. Right. She's got active treason. She's asking if she oh. can grab it. And if she gets the, the token, yeah, which she, will. she should. Yeah. It's, so it's active. Yeah, so she like gets it. to use, she would get to use the cipher. I've actually had this situation come yeah. up on Moto, and she would also get to use extort. Right, because she's cast. Oh, but she doesn't have extort creature anymore. She traded her sending. Yeah. yeah. So she's uh, she's gonna active treason, I imagine, or that's that's what the question was about anyway. Yep. Here goes three Nana. Active treason, your guy. Yeah, so, but she would be able to extort on the uh, on the cipher. Because she still she's still she kills the screen too. Yeah. Exactly, she will be able to. So she gets that guy. They'll set up battalion. Uh, she'll attack with all three. In all likelihood, the uh, one of the ground guys will get blocked. Um, Jack will get blocked. She'll get in for one, like three-ish. Extort and make a flyer. Is that right? Yeah, I guess his qu the three. question is he can. He can chump block the the screecher with his horror and let her. He can't do that though. He's so low on life. So no, but no she, he just ate the he ate the screecher. Did she just steal it and attack with that? I mean, no, he ate the screecher. Oh, he ate it with the corp yeah. blockade. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. I mean, I think he had to do that. Just to keep... I forgot about the sacrifice yeah. outlet that he had there. I mean, it's right there, but I, I forgot. It's one of the best ways to deal with active treason. So, Corpse Blockade has the ability to sacrifice a creature to gain death touch. Exactly. So, which also would have disincentivized any ground, okay. any ground attack because that guy would have then been able to eat whatever creature he wanted to put in. Wow. And Lord of the Void from John Cuvelier has... Uh, there it is, 7-7 seven, seven for 7, flying. <laughs> Melissa's is like, um, I really wish I sold that Act of Treason. <laughs> yeah, really. But this, I mean, she used it as a removal spell. She knew that what we were missing, or at least what I was missing about the corpse blockade, she's like, that guy's no, code like is clear that he's going he's gonna to do that. Sure, sure, but she's basically happen. like, this is upside either yeah, way. Right? Sure, sure. Uh, if he, if he does it, I, I was able to... Uh, well, that's what I mean. It's like... She used it as either a removal spell or a pretty, pretty fancy combat. Uh, oh, it's super effective as a removal advantage. spell, right? Like, she got rid of like uh, an extort guy that had cipher on it. Like that's right. That's what I mean. Two good things to get rid of. That was the answer she needed for the Call of the Nightwing uh, Basilica Creature combo. But uh, now she's facing down a uh, fully different, an insane threat. bomb. I'm sorry, an unholy different threat. So she's having uh, six. <laughs> oh, She's got a monster, so so John, if he can just send in, send in the. She doesn't have a blocker, right? No, he's just he's gonna just connect with Lord of the Void, and that's gonna uh, give him any creature out of her graveyard. That uh, I'm sorry, not out of her graveyard, out of the top seven. She's gonna she's gonna get milled. This is a yeah. ethically bad situation for her, right? Right. So here it is. Connects for seven, and then it mills the top seven. Um. They're actually they're exiled, and he gets to pick a creature and put it on the battlefield. And he his choice is bomber core. Oh, he's got towering thunderfist. Okay, I didn't see that quite a, quite a way. I feel like maybe people should construct with Lord of the Void. That's <laughs> insane. I mean, he's no bristlebrand, but uh, that is pretty sick. Yeah, he does. He does. So he gets a chance. <laughs> I love your ears. He's no bristlebrand. He's no bristlebrand. I don't know. When I when I think of giant, you know, mono black. Finishers, I, I want. I want a. Card casting eights are so reasonable. Yeah. 
But then again, you know, Grizzle Brand costs four with Umbrella Rights. Fair enough. It costs like two in Legacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh played one against me in turn one. <laughs> yeah, Grizzle Brand. Yeah, that's all. So, Melissa, let's see, she rumbles with everything. They're all getting blocked. And. Yeah, in the meantime, he also got a uh, Syndicate Enforcer on the board. Uh, the turn he, he attacked with the Lord of the Void. So, Ripscale Predator, War Mine Infantry gets the uh, Battalion, and Nat Squad Commandos also gets Battalion. I'm sorry, that's not that, that Nat Squad Commandos, the uh, Daring Skyjack. So it's flying, it's getting blocked by our horror. The Syndicate Enforcer is getting in front of the War Mine Infantry, which is 4-3. Uh, so they're going to trade off, uh, barring any combat tricks. And then the Towering Thunderfist and the... Uh, the corpse blockade are blocking the ripscale predator because it requires two blockers. So, and so what's going to happen? So we're going to dead jack. Going to bounce on the dot on the bottom right, and then dead giant. That was a pretty profitable block for John. Yeah, I mean, he took he took a couple damage to there, though, didn't he? Uh, no, I think he blocked everything. No, he didn't block that guy. Untaps. Was Did he attack? I didn't realize it attacked. I'm sorry. I thought I thought she just held it back, but she may have just declared the attack and untapped yeah, it. I, I think that's what happened. So yeah, does, he did take four. So the Nav Squad Commandos hit him. I mean, I guess she has to play for whatever damage she can get in. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he is at four. Um, I don't know what she's gonna hit. Do here. She just got hit by the uh, Lord of the Void for a second time. She's down to. Uh, she has. She has a very small window to deal with that Lord of the Void, and she doesn't. So uh, Melissa de Tora falls to John Cavelli and his Lord of the Void. It really looked like Melissa was going to be ahead that game. Well, she had a good start, but uh, he was able to put up enough of a defense to um, to, to find his end game. And the, the cool thing is, he had two end games there. He's like Basilica, Basilica Screecher called the Nightwing. That was my end game last game. Uh, it's a heck of a combo, and then uh, she she dealt with that, and he said, "Oh, I'll just play this other guy." Like seven seven it, flyer. It doesn't right? matter who starts the fight, right? It matters who yeah. finishes the fight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In this case, Bat Finisher was Lord of. He could have won like several different ways, like you said. Could have won with Cipher. Could have won with Extort. Yeah. Could have won with just smashing for seven, 